my name is Shitesh Kumar Sharma and today I'll be discussing about one of my project that is light tracking solar cell. As the name itself suggests, we are trying to develop a mechanism in which, uh, which will enable a solar cell to track the maximum intensity light. So here let me repeat my sentence. Uh, we are trying to track the maximum intensity light, not the position of sun. So with the help of this project, we will be, we will uh, enable the solar cells uh, to track the maximum intensity light, which will increase the energy production. So uh, moving on to why light tracking solar cell is actually required or why do we need this light tracker or this tracking algorithm? So there are two fundamental reasons for it. Uh, so first of all, I'll be discussing about why we actually need solar cells. So as we know that uh, in India or as well as in US also, 60% of energy production is from coal. And we know that the coal is non-renewable resource of energy and it is going to end up. So in near future, it has been predicted that in next decade or next to next decade, we are going to face, face an uh, energy pandemic. So energy pandemic because uh, uh, the demand or the requirement of energy is increasing day by day. We can't even imagine one minute of our life without energy. So, but the demand is increasing and the generation process is, uh, uh, we can say uh, in a word, it is decreasing because uh, these non-renewable resources are ending up. So uh, in that sense, I'm saying that it is decreasing and in near future, they will end up. So as they end up, so we will have uh, like uh, the, the power generation uh, will be completely shut down because 60% of the power generation depends on till now 60% of the power generation depends on uh, these uh, uh, like non-renewable resources such as coal etc <clears throat> and so that is the reason why uh, countries and a lot of uh, firms are investing uh, towards this solar technology because uh, these solar cells and solar technology we can consider the solar as a uh, solar is uh, is exactly a renewable resource and it is even considered it can be considered as an infinite source of energy so uh, like and and uh, and taking energy from solar like solar cells are uh, quite uh, let's say uh, talking about a practical situation the general solar cells we are having nowadays are maybe flat or we install them at some place and we uh, which are static and we keep it uh, let's say they are like kept horizontally on on the ground surface so if they are kept horizontally then during sunrise sun rises from the east and it's uh, it downs like it sets in west so when it rises from east so then then on this on that solar cell uh, the like uh, the rays that comes from some sun, the maximum intensity like doesn't reaches to that solar cell. Like it uh, gets inclined and it gets an inclination on that solar cell due to which the solar cell is unlike due to which the solar cell didn't provide uh, like didn't generate that amount of energy. So <clears throat> the energy generation for that kind of solar cell is maximum only during the uh, like uh, when the sun is on head. Uh, or we can say during the afternoon time and even at during uh, like the sunset also time like uh, sunset or before uh, like one hour or two hour before sunset also the energy generation actually decreases during the evening it is at the peak during the afternoon and it is uh, like it again it is at its lower point during the morning time so to solve this problem we have uh, uh, we are trying to develop a tracker which can be installed with any solar cell any relying system and it can make it uh, and it and that can increase the productivity of energy from the solar cells so and the the amount of productivity that can be increased will be discussed in the results section in the later part of this slides only so first of all uh, we will see how that solar cell works we will see by a demonstration video uh, how this solar cell uh, like how this light tracking solar cell works so here is the video So as in this video, we can see that we are using a virtual source of light. So, and as we are moving the light, wherever the light is going, the intensity is maximum. Then the solar tracker is aligning itself 
and trying to get the maximum amount of energy. So it's a dual axis, uh, like it is dual axis, like it has a two degrees of freedom. So, so as we have seen uh, into uh, the, the demonstration video, how exactly it is working. So we have uh, constructed a virtual environment uh, for the like demonstration purpose, because if we have to uh, record a real time video, then we like uh, real time demonstration, then with, with like where uh, exactly with sun, then, then we have to record a video for more than 10 hours, then it will, and we will have to see it in fast forward. Then we will realize the, uh, like actual, how it actually, how it is changing. So, but we have uh, made a virtual environment and we have uh, like uh, use our flashlight as a <coughs> source of light. And then uh, we have demonstrated the like working of this uh, solar tracker and like how exactly it is working. What is the algorithm behind the thing? So as you can see the two picture of this uh, uh, like uh, solar uh, cell with all these things. So I will discuss a brief algorithmic uh, representation of how this works. So let us say this is the uh, like axis which I am going to consider uh, for the purpose of this explanation. <clears throat> so this is let's say this is Z axis uh, which is perpendicular to this uh, solar plate and then this is X axis and this is Y axis. So <clears throat> so as we know that there are uh, this this tracker has two degrees of freedom. So these two contributes to one degree and these two contributes to one degree. So <clears throat> if, if let's say, uh, like if, if this sensor is uh, detecting that it is uh, like having a, it is a LDR sensor. These four are actually LDR sensors. So like our photo register, we can say so. Uh, whenever light falls on it or whenever high intensity light falls on it, its resistance resistance value decreases. So that is what we are reading and uh, depending upon that, we are taking decision that uh, which side we are having a higher intensity and which side we are having a lower intensity. So depending upon the intensity, we are trying to uh, move, move like where we will find lower resistance and we will lean down to that side, uh, like following the algorithm, following our algorithm. <clears throat> and by the observation, we have observed that uh, this the movement along this uh, XZ plane, uh, sorry XY plane. This movement along this XY plane is uh, bound to plus minus twenty degrees. Movement along this and this side is bound to plus minus twenty degrees. And movement along XZ plane, YZ plane is bound to plus minus twenty degrees, and YZ plane is bound to plus minus thirty degrees. Uh, this this has not been directly uh, like. Uh, in, given into the algorithm, but this is a practical observation that it doesn't go beyond that. <clears throat> this limits. So this contributes to like, okay. And one more thing is this, uh, like this servo motor nine is controlling the, uh, this movement along exit plane. And, uh, this servo motor 10 is controlling the movement along <coughs> X, Y plane. So, And that is how, that is how uh, like we are controlling these two degrees, uh, like uh, controlling the two degree movement of the solar cells <clears throat> of the solar cell with the help of this four LDR uh, positioned over there. So uh, moving on to the exact circuit and algorithm. So this is the circuit diagram, which we, which we have implemented and this is the algorithm. So <clears throat> in that algorithm, we are reading the values and then uh, like initially we are writing the position and then what we are finding if uh, there is a like this is a checking for this is for checking the brightness of uh, uh, those like which side we are having a greater brightness or which size we are having a lesser brightness and depending upon that we are making a decision and then we are updating the position and we are moving for like this is this is this process is like uh, continues until the processor is on or until the controller is on we can say that and one more thing we can say here so here we are using these servo motors this is a servo motor and the 10 number is a servo motor so what we have used mg95 servo motors so uh, 
this servo motor what the servo motor does is this servo motor uh, obtains a torque holding torque of mechanical we can say mechanical holding torque of 5 kg so which means so we, we do not need to give any power or anything to it to hold a 5 kg of weight so it will hold it will hold it it has a mechanical holding capacity of 5 kg which we have used we can even increase that capacity by changing the servo motor so according to our requirement we have used this one so this what this does is a lot of uh, solar trackers uh, or let's say uh, uh, at a lot of places uh, they use steeper motor so the steeper motor has to like uh, continuously consume some amount of power to generate that holding torque but here we are obtaining it uh, with the help of mechanical torque so uh, here we are not providing continuous power to it we are providing power to it only when uh, we want to change its position so that is how we are conserving some energy also <clears throat> so uh, this this is the actual uh, so this is the actual demonstration uh, uh, this is the actual uh, circuit and the uh, like algorithm and <clears throat> the uh, this is the result analysis so uh, like uh, in the result analysis so what we have uh, like we have made a uh, two kind of re result analysis one on a sunny day and on a cloudy day so there is a reason why we have did like that so on a sunny day we have observed that uh, on a sunny day uh, like the two degree of freedom on a sunny day like if we are not even having two degrees of freedom if we are keeping uh, it uh, one degrees of freedom also uh, let's say for only east to west uh, that motion is only there then also we are achieving almost uh, this like almost relatively this graph only so on a sunny day we are obtaining around 33 33 point uh, sorry 33% uh, like 33% gain in power production uh, let's say let's say uh, if we are having 1000 thousand units units of power production by a static solar cell if we are having a static solar cell and that generates a uh, like uh, that generates thousand units then with the help of this tracker we are able to generate thousand one thousand three hundred and thirty we can say mathematically so one thousand three hundred thirty units so that is how uh, in a sunny day because in a sunny day there are no clouds and some natural phenomena such as reflection refraction they doesn't occur so due to that uh, what happened is uh, if even if we are not having two degrees of freedom also then also we are able to easily cope up with uh, the situation <clears throat> the cope up with e cope up with it easily and then coming to the like cloudy or rainy day so here we here the graph is very like very much high so here we have observed 57.5 percent gain in energy production so let's say like in us on a sunny day we are generating 1000 units if with a static solar cell and on a cloudy day let's say it is 100 units with that only with a that static solar cell it is going to be 100 units so as as it is a cloudy day cloudy or rainy day it cannot be greater than uh, that of uh, the sunny day so <clears throat> so it is going to be a hundred units uh, let's say let's say assume so then if it is hundred unit then the tracker with the help of that tracker we are able to generate 157.5 units so which is 57.5 percent more than that of <clears throat> the uh, static one which is actually uh, quite uh, like beneficial for the if we are able to generate this much of many like amount of energy on uh, one day and and this is this is for a small purpose and if we are generating on a higher purpose let's say one kilovolt two kilovolt or 10 kilovolt then if on a one day we are able to gain 57.5 percent then uh, <clears throat> this is a there will be like n number of houses let's say 10 20 number of houses will be powered just by this extra gain only so that is the benefit that is the uh, like uh, the biggest benefit and uh, moving on to the cost analysis now so the cost analysis as we have used uh, uh, like minimal amount of uh, things we have used for registers and a microcontroller and uh, <coughs> two servos 
so two servos uh, so here we are not using any uh, stepper motor so overall cost of uh, the like overall cost goes to 15 almost around 1500 rupees so and and it is it is constant for uh, all 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 dimension of solar cells because uh, any solar cell is uh, like the size with increase in size of the solar cell a uh, little bit amount of weight is increased not a high amount of weight is increased so uh, our tracker configurations are almost constant so that's why the cost is also constant so on a very cheaper cost we are able to deliver a very high amount of efficiency and a very high amount of gain in power generation so now coming to overall advantages of uh, this solar tracker so this solar tracker is able to generate higher amount of power or uh, <clears throat> we can say in other words uh, it is uh, like better to implement this one uh, instead of uh, the relying system which we are having so uh, and uh, like it it also it is better for the cloudy uh, weather let's say uh, the the main problem with the solar cells is that in cloudy or in rainy season it doesn't gives us that much of power and uh, then again we have to go for the that go for the coal one or some other other sources of power so but but this works in cloudy weather also and it can be easily accommodated with any existing solar cell that is the biggest plus point and it can be installed at any place and anywhere so there is no restriction that uh, it needs any environment or anything it can be installed any place anywhere so that is that is all our that's all its advantages and overview uh, in an overview so that's all from my side. Thank you and have a nice day.